When I first heard that Tidal Music was going to start paying out royalties using a user-centric payment model, I was ecstatic. I wanted to shout it from the rooftops, write an epic song that future generations would sing in praise of the dawn of fair remuneration for songwriters and musicians. Alas, when I read about how they were implementing it, I came to the realization that it was nothing more than a gimmick. And, well, I was disappointed, to say the least. Title Music, bought back in 2015 by Jay-Z and a grab bag of top pop artists in a horribly pretentious display of we have way too much money, has been largely sold off to Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's company, Square. Given that Tidal has posted losses in the tens of millions since it was purchased by Jay-Z, one has to wonder if it was a sound investment. Clearly, Jay-Z and Co.'s putting artists first sort of motto wasn't enough to win over the masses. Hardly surprising, because as this Forbes article points out, the fact that Tidal is artist-owned should be powerful. But it has limited impact as a narrative because the artist owners are all already millionaires and hardly the portrait of starving artists. Okay, so artist owned and artist first didn't convince people to jump to the platform. But they still have high quality audio and that would surely bring in the masses. Unfortunately, most people listening to music don't really hear the quality difference to find it worth paying for. Hell, even Vitze from White Sea Studios back in 2018 when he switched to Apple remarked that The Apple Music AAC codec is really shitty. So it's cool to listen to an earbuds and, and, you know, speakers that aren't made for giving you the best sound quality. But if I want to listen to high quality audio files, I, I, I just buy the high quality audio WAV files. So think about it. If Vitze a mix and mastering engineer is like, eh, whatevs, crap audio quality on my phone is fine. How do you expect the average human to care? Remember that his work is completely defined by his ability to hear music in ways most people don't. So while high quality lossless streaming attracts audiophiles, which I believe are mostly classical music lovers, this is a very, very small segment of the overall streaming market. Now, Tidal also had a standard quality tier for the same price as Spotify's premium tier. But if a user already has their entire catalog saved in their Spotify account, why would they go through the trouble of rebuilding it on a different platform for the same money? That is a serious time investment and... Ain't nobody got time for that! Naturally, there are platforms like Soundiz and To My Music that exist to automate the process. But they're really interested in having you pay a subscription fee for the services. So while you can use them for free, if you have a large library with multiple playlists, the free tiers are not likely to be all that time saving in the end. Plus, it involves signing up for another website and going through all that other hassle. And no, sweet brand, no, no. Funny though, that despite being artists first, Tidal Music never rolled out user-centric royalties while under Jay-Z's ownership. To be fair, I expect that many of the other artist co-owners would have been on the losing end of the wealth redistribution that implementing user-centric royalties would have meant. So I guess by artists first, they meant us first, a two Jay-Z. So now Tidal is largely owned by financial services company Square, who thinks they can leverage the platform to make the monies. And they think that adopting a user-centric payment system is a way to achieve it. So why do I think that Tidal Music's upcoming fan-centered royalties is a gimmick? Well, the ultimate reason comes down to motive. In order to compete with Apple and Amazon's decisions earlier this year to offer high-quality audio to everyone as part of their standard plans, Tidal could no longer justify charging $20 a month for high quality audio streaming, meaning their standard $10 a month plan had to upgrade. Now, even though most people don't care about the quality difference, 
the marketing hype by Apple and Amazon meant that in order to keep those users who actually do care about the quality difference, Tidal needed to remain price competitive or risk those customers jumping ship. Now, streaming files that require twice the bandwidth at half the subscription price can't be good for the bottom line, so clearly Tidal's new owners had to do something. Throw a free tier into the mix, why don't you? That's good for the bottom line, isn't it? Absolutely not. So they had to do something else. Well, they did. They created a new premium tier. And if you subscribe to this tier, you must clearly love music. So we'll pay out royalties using a user-centric payment system that we'll call fan-centered royalties. So one out of three plans will pay fan-centered royalties. But why? After all, they themselves say, we are introducing fan-centered royalties on our Hi-Fi Plus plan, which we believe is a fair and more transparent way to calculate royalty payments. Now, if you believe this, or if they believe this, why is it only on their Hi-Fi Plus plan? Why wouldn't they push for this across all the subscription plans? I, I guess it's just fair and more transparent if your fans love you enough to pay for it. I believe that Tidal is trying to recover some of the losses they are facing from having to offer high-quality streaming at half their previous price, as well as needing to buffer the free tier that they will offer in 2022. Now, how exactly does offering this higher price tier buffer against these sort of hits? Well, in the agreements streaming services make with publishers and distributors, they negotiate what portion of streaming revenue will be kept by the streaming service and what portion will be paid out as royalties. Now, I don't know what agreements Tidal has struck, but they're likely to be similar to Apple, who revealed earlier this year that they pay a flat headline rate of 52% of streaming revenue out as royalties. And any way you look at the math, 52% of 1999 is twice as much as 52% of 999. And I'm guessing that the amount of music streamed on average between people in those two tiers won't vary that much. And I also have a hunch that high quality streaming won't be turned on by default in Tidal's apps, meaning that most people will be paying double to stream in a standard lossy format anyway, thus keeping costs somewhat in check for Tidal music. So since higher than high quality audio isn't enough of a draw, they're trying to appeal to the music fan's sense of righteousness. I mean, what music lover wouldn't want their favorite artists to be paid fairly? In a way, it, it feels a bit like they're manipulating fans on this one. You know, it's a subtle and rather psychological. If you don't sign up for our most expensive plan to make sure that your favorite artists are compensated fairly, do you really even care about them? So, Title is saying sign up for the Hi Fi Plus plan and your artists will receive fan centered royalties, right? Well, no, not necessarily. If you, music fan, sign up for the Hi-Fi Plus plan through service providers, your money paid will not be paid out as fan-centered royalties. Does this affect Tidal's revenue in any way? I have no idea. But for sure, a lot of people sign up for music streaming through service providers like Sprint or T-Mobile because doing so often comes with a discount. So unless Tidal intends to disclose during sign-up, that the royalties will not be paid via the user-centric model, this could be an easy way to dupe those users. For what financial benefit? Who knows? But beware. And ultimately, this is why I think it is nothing more than a gimmick, a grab for revenue to try and save a sinking ship. Tidal is offering fan-centered royalties, hoping to leverage the goodwill of the music fans for their own financial gain, under the guise of doing the right thing. And ultimately, this is why it is likely to fail. I just don't think music fans are gonna buy it. Having said that, I hope that I'm wrong and that it succeeds and that it is popular. Because if it is popular, it would signal that fans want to have their money fairly allocated among the artists they listen to, which could ultimately encourage other streaming services to take the user-centric royalty model more seriously. The new free tier and the revised premium tier with fan-centered royalties in some situations go live in 2022 
So all we can do now is wait and see what the future will bring. What do you think? Would you pay more if it meant the artists you listen to would be paid more fairly? And would you be willing to switch to a streaming provider that pays royalties out more equitably? Let me know in the comments below. And since you made it this far, why not reward yourself by tapping that like button down there? Go on. You deserve it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, cheers.